Hey, watch where you're going. <laughs> oh no, the stroller, the stroller, the strollers. Welcome to the channel, everybody. Lunker Hunter here. Got a new one for you today. I'm gonna be going over what I like about the kayak, what I'm not so big of a fan of. I'm gonna be going over also my setup, uh, everything I've added on to the kayak, things I, I wish I had different, things I really like, and things I'm, I might be getting maybe in, in the future. So no fishing today, but I think this video will be uh, really helpful um, to a lot of you anglers that are uh, looking to either buy a kayak, add some things to their kayak, that they they wish they had i know me buying a kayak buying all my fishing gear i, I really appreciated people that put out videos where they've reviewed the stuff they have maybe after a year or two of using it so i've had this kayak two or three years hopefully it helps a lot of you out there give me that like subscribe to my channel i really appreciate it i want to i'm wanting to grow this thing so um let's get to it Here's my kayak, everybody. It's a Lifetime Yukon kayak. It's got a little hatch here, dry hatch, that I never use. It's got these adjustable foot pedals on, on both sides. I can either push it or pull it. Sometimes I push a little hard on these and they, they slide forward, but for the most part, 95% of the time, they stay in place. Uh, you got your measuring cutouts here. What I really like about this kayak is that uh, you got these drain canals here. And that's actually really helpful so water doesn't pool up um, by my feet and under my seat. What I also take advantage of is the mounts here. They're about a foot long. Uh, there's only two of them. I wish it had one more, uh, like right here. I was thinking about putting one more on, but I've been happy with it. And then it's got a little uh, thing here, you attachment you can put a camera or like a mount. Mount whatever you want there. We got rod holders. These rod holders are at an angle, which you'll see later. So actually I don't really use these for poles, but I actually put my camera in this back left one. It's at the back shoulder view. The angle of the PVC when it comes out is out to the side this way. So it's not straight up man, it's out to the side, which I really like uh, for the camera angle. And come into the back, you got scupper holes in the back, and you got a nice big space in the back, which I really like. Because I got a lot of gear I bring with me, which you'll see. And the crate I have in the back is, is pretty big, but it fits easily. And you got a max weight here, 350. I'm 230, and I stand up on this thing when it's not choppy, and I'm fine. This kayak, I think, is 11 and a half feet long. Something I think could be better on this kayak. It doesn't bother me really because I made a kayak cart that I can put under the kayak to pull it. But there's a little keel wheel here. This whole thing comes off. Um, this wheel is plastic. Right now it doesn't even move because it snapped. But it doesn't bother me because I made my own kayak cart. I actually have a, a new one. that I'll show you guys that today as well. Handles are solid. No issues here at all. I've never had any screws come out. Uh, there's two on the side here that I use every time I, I take it out. There's one on the front that I use. Drain plug here, you can pull out and lay it on its side and drain it. But I really don't get any water in this thing, honestly. I got this thing a few years ago on uh, Facebook Marketplace. I got it for a steal of a deal. Uh, I think at Walmart, uh, I think it's like 350, 400. You wanna get in? A boat. Oh, boat, yeah. Let me show you the bottom really quick. Watch out, watch out, bud. Woo! Here's the bottom. Scratches, no issues with leaks, anything. I've hit plenty of rocks, plenty of logs. No big deal, that's what happens sometimes. So now I'm gonna go through how I set up my kayak. Some of these parts are stock. Some of them I bought extra to add on. First thing I do, I'll grab my seat. I'll put my seat here. The next thing I grab is something I've bought extra that I really, really like. Actually, probably my 
One of my favorite things I've bought on this kayak. This is what I'm talking about. I bought these off a uh, person who 3D prints these. I bought it off Facebook. You can find these everywhere. They're salt, they're plastic, but they're solid. I've had no issues. So what these do is they raise the seat up about two inches. The back piece is angled a little bit. Front piece is straight. You can actually go right into these things and just put them on there. Put this one on here. Then these two pieces go on the back of the seat here. And in these little things, there's a screw that tightens the thing down. But I just have it a little bit loose and no problems. So I'll put those on both sides. There's two settings here. There's a front one and a back one. The, the back one is higher. It's a higher setting. Snap it in. And I'll make sure the back pieces are lined up. And we're good to go seat is nice because you can tighten it in the back so after like two three hours of fishing this thing will loosen up just a, a little bit you'll start kind of um, reclining a little bit more in the chair you just pull on them, both of them uh, just to tighten it up cinch it up and you're good to go seat's super comfortable this is a big reason i got this kayak because this because of the comfortable seat here's a kind of a look at how it is raised it's like two two and a half inches raised and that it's nice as i can slide my gear under the under the seat so next what i do i grab a paddle this is the ozark trail paddle this is the one the guy had it's the button lock here lock it in and then you strap it in and it's not moving anywhere this is my kayak cart this is the kind of the rain of the of the kayak that's where all the important stuff goes i'm going to leave a link in this video to the video where i made this kayak card it's super easy super cheap and it's been working for me i have no complaints with this cart the cart just goes right in okay right there these are just little bungees bought them at home depot one is hooked to the back hole here i have two one on each side what i do is hook the cart to the back of the bottom of the seat. That's all it is. The reason I do this is when I got all my my rods in here, the weight comes back and it would pull it, my whole crate would tip over. But with these secured here, there's no that box isn't going anywhere. This kind of has all my soft plastics in it that I need easy access to. It's like my uh, I put my scale in here, and then sometimes I keep my phone in here just slides right under the seat here's my Garmin striker 4 here's my transducer and the transducer mount these are separate pieces here I bought this separate and this separate loosen this up a little bit and that should just slide right on to that to that mount and I put it all the way close to me then you tighten that sucker on once it's tight there's a little knob here when you loosen it, this arm falls down and you put it in the water with your, this is your transducer. Put it back up, you loosen it up, comes right up, and you tighten it, and it stays right there. Super simple. Now this, this just pops right in, and then this, the Garmin, just slides right in. This is the transducer wire. In another video, I have made this. This is the dry box for the battery. Hey, this is how I power my fish finder. I'll leave a link for this video as well. This box stays in here. This is full of spinner baits and, uh, and buzz bait stuff, just stuff that's too big to hold in my tackle boxes. Uh, this is my chesty that I occasionally use. Always gotta have your water. I just keep all my soft plastics in here. I don't bring them all with me, but I just keep them in here in the garage. I'll show you where I put my clips, and I'll show you where I put this. But this is my battery box. It just stays on its side like this, okay? Hopefully I can make this, this seem as easy as it is. I just clip it in, clip. I run this wire through one of the holes of the crate, under the seat under the seat and into the fish finder and that should just power right up okay that wire is just kind of 
it stays in place. I don't need to clamp it down with anything and it, not getting fancy here. Just basic, simple stuff. It's functional and that works. These are the clippers. I just keep them right here. There's a little clip and I just clip it on to this little rope that's already been installed. This is this comes on the kayak, that way they don't fall in the water. Tackle boxes in, spinner baits, chesty mount, water, binoculars. You never know when you need those. I just bought this. I've only used it once and it was pretty nice. It's a paddle holder, slides right on. So there and you just start twisting it and it'll tighten up. What I use that for is this net right here. This is the Frable locking net. It's nice because it slides down and gets shorter when you're, when you're driving with it. I'll leave a link for this as well. I've only taken this out once, I just bought it. So I'll lock it out. You kind of just play with the angle you want it at. That's all it is. This does float, in case you're wondering. This is courtesy of Bassman and Bobbin. I'm gonna leave a link to how he made his GoPro mount. This is a super cheap option because a lot of those out there are super expensive, but this was super cheap. The reason I have the electrical tape is to keep it snug inside this hole. I twist it in, just goes in nice and easy. Now this is the angle I was talking about, see that? It allows for a kind of a, a better angle, I think, for the GoPro, like over the shoulder. Once it's all mounted up, I'll film it from my phone, but there's a mount for the GoPro that makes it so you can adjust it easier. So far, this is what we're looking like. Okay, nothing crazy. Here is a kayak cart I had sent to me. It's Yak Hacker, I think it's on Amazon, I'm not sure. Here's the owner's manual. This thing is, this is solid. This is like a rubber material. This is made solid. These come off and this actually, uh, you can take this in half. It all breaks down, wheels come off. It can all fit in that front hatch of the kayak if you're going on like a trip. This is the one I made with Bassman and Bobbin. Super easy. PVC, a metal pole here, uh, a couple washers and nuts, so. This goes through the back scupper holes right here. So the way this cart works is these things can move right here. Okay, you can adjust the angle you want it at. And there's a little kickstand on the back. When you put the kayak on, the kickstand is supposed to be pointing towards the back of the kayak. I'm about to put the cart under the kayak. It would probably have been easier to put the kayak on the cart first uh keep that in mind but um i'm just going to show you how i do it it's still not not too heavy you just gotta work it under that and you kind of push it however far you think you need it probably about there and then it has these straps okay and we're going to tighten it up as high as you can get it. Yeah. yeah. So we just want to double check that it's straight on there. Put the kickstand up. Looks good to me. One more check, tightening it down. We're good there. It's nice and tight. Like that. So as you can see, this thing's pretty dang sweet. It's smooth, it's easy to pull. It's not heavy when you're pulling it. I, I recommend the cart. The cart is really good. <laughs> I've pulled it over grass. I've pulled it over sand, uh, dirt. So again, that's Yak Hacker. These are some of their products here. So they got paddle holders, the kayak cart, some more paddle holders. These are some pretty cool uh, coolers that hook onto the back of the seat. And then they got some cup holders there. This is how it comes in these pieces. 
super easy assembly. I'm gonna take the boat out. I'll show you how I put the rods in. Here we go. <laughs> this is how I store my poles. Just bungees with little knots in them. Okay, I got four poles here. Uh, if they're on the edges, it doesn't bounce around. But if they're if they're in the middle, it'll if you hit a bump, it'll bounce. They fit right over the front shades that fold down. And I just open the shade, put slide the rod in, and close it gently against so they're like secured, sandwiched in between the hood and the shade. And that way, they're the tips are safe and they're not gonna move around. But without the bungees, if I push this a little bit, this whole thing would tip tip backwards. This thing isn't going anywhere. This is my new life jacket. It's the Chinook. Uh, it's super nice. Um, super comfortable. Super durable. It feels really good quality. It's got some nice pockets, zippers. This will be really nice. This should last me a long time. Here's the GoPro setup. This is the little add-on here that is awesome. It's a little has a little ball joint. So this part I bought separate and this part I bought separate. This part is connected to the GoPro, comes with the GoPro. I use the Hero 8 Black, so this part is all metal, and then this part's plastic. I wish this part was metal. And then it just screws right on to that screw there. I bought this door on it that allows me to charge. I keep the battery in just in case this gets pulled out, this, we're, we're still running. I just kind of circle it around this pole, and it attaches to this power pack. It's the Anchor Power Pack. It lasts me all day. Bassman and Bobbin showed me how to do this setup, so go check his channel out. This isn't waterproof, so I put it in this dry bag, and the dry bag will just either go here or uh, just between me and the seat in case it starts raining. If it does start raining, I'll, I'll, I can grab the pole and bend it toward me or, or I'll have to take this off because this door is not waterproof. I'll, put, I'll have to put the other door on, then it's all waterproof. To get the kayak on top of the van, I bought these Shoreline Marine. Uh, this goes under the front hood. And this part is looped so you can strap the kayak. This one goes in the, in the back door of the trunk. Put it in, close it so I can secure the back. I secure them onto the front and back handles and just two over the middle of the kayak. And I have four of these tie downs. I don't get the ones where you can crank them down because I've heard not to do that because you can over tighten them. And if the plastic of the kayak gets hot, it can kind of disfigure the mold of the kayak. Here's the brand here. I got these on Amazon, one by 12. They're the lashing straps, so super sturdy. <laughs> I, I really like those. I, th I never worry that the kayak's not stable on top of the car. There it is. One final look. Eddie. Yep. So, if you don't want to break the bank with a Hobie or or uh, one of those uh, pedal drive kayaks, even though I'd love to have one of those, that's that's the dream. Um, this kayak's awesome. Eventually, I am gonna have a pedal drive because hands-free fishing in the kayak sounds amazing. One thing I'm gonna do is put a motor, a trolling motor on the back of this. But on a budget, man, this this kayak's been amazing. 13 Fishing Blackout, 13 Fishing Fate V3, 13 Fishing Fate Black, and the Ugly Stick GX2. What do you think? What do you think? You want to get off? Woo! So, there it is. This is the Lifetime Yukon. Hopefully, uh, you guys learned a thing or two. Hopefully, if you're looking at this kayak, you feel better about buying it. I'd rate this kayak a 9 out of 10. The only th thing I complain about is just that it doesn't have pedals. Which, if you want pedals, you gotta spend an arm and a leg. So, that's super light for being a big kayak. If you are picky like me, it's hard for you to buy stuff. Do not feel worried about buying this kayak. There it is, guys. 